In this video, we're going to look at electrical transformers. I'm not going to tell you too much about how they work or anything like that. Maybe I'll cover that. I'm just going to run you through the components of an electrical transformer so you can see how they're designed and some of the different types that are available to us. So let's start with the basic one. This is a cast resin electrical transformer, also sometimes just called a dry type transformer. This is how it would look normally if you were to see it out and about within a transformer vault. They're going to be located inside because the other types of transformer can survive outside, this one can't. So the internal components here, or the components here, are replicated in other types of transformer. The only difference is that they're contained within a housing and that housing is full of insulating liquid. I'll explain a bit about that in a moment. So what have we got? Let's back this up for a moment. We've got some cooling fans here. We've got a steel laminate core. And this steel laminate core consists of many, many thin, I think hundreds of thin laminations that have been clamped together. And we're going to clamp them together on each one of the transformer limbs. That's one, two, three, one for each phase. So it's a three phase transformer. And we're also going to clamp them at the bottom here and also at the top. Now, when we assemble this transformer, we can see that some cylinders that have gone on top of the transformer limbs. Those are the low voltage and high voltage windings, and the configuration depends upon if you want to increase or decrease the voltage. What's actually happening is we're getting electrical current flowing through a conductor, that's our windings, and because of the proximity of the other windings, and because there's more of them or less of them, we're going to induce a voltage in those other windings. If there's more of them, we induce more voltage. If there's less of them, we induce less voltage. Now, if we switch to another type of transformer, you'll see this one here is a hermetic type transformer. It's sealed. It's going to be full of insulating liquid, typically a mineral oil, but sometimes you might also get what they call eco-friendly oils. These would be plant-based oils made from vegetable oil, for lack of a better word, or lack of a better term. And we're going to fill the entire casing up with that insulating liquid. Maybe we'll fill the bushings up as well. And it's imperative then that we keep that unit sealed and closed. That's why it's hermetic, like a hermit likes to be isolated on its own. And when it is like that, we stop any moisture ingress, we stop any air contamination affecting our insulating oil. I think after about 10 or 20 years, they recommend opening it and sampling it, which you can do. Although I admit, I actually see these transformers sampled maybe yearly, every two years. It really depends on what people demand needs to be done. It depends on the company. Some companies say every two years, that's just the way they like to have it. They sample the oil because it's like a blood test and they can analyze the oil to determine the health of the transformer. So here are the windings going around our limbs again. Notice this time though, we've got the windings coming up. They connect to these bushings. The bushings are just pointing up and sticking out of the tank. Over here, we've got high voltage bushings. You can see that the insulation, the Christmas tree shape, there's a lot of insulation here. That indicates that we have a higher voltage than on the other side where the insulation is less. So insulation is determined by the voltage, whereas the conductor size is determined by the amount of current that's flowing through the conductor. Over here, we've got a protection device, which I'm not going to cover in this video because we need a bit more time. And let's flick now to a different type of transformer. I just want to have you notice, though, before we go, that this also has heat exchangers on the side. You can see these little fins sticking off. These fins are the heat exchanger, and this transformer is going to be air naturally cooled and oil naturally cooled. What I mean here is that we're going to have the oil moving from the bottom of the tank to the top, that's natural convection because as it gets warm, it rises up and then as it's cooled down, it goes back down again. And on the outside here, we've got air natural because this is an air naturally cooled heat exchanger attached to the side of the tank. Now, if we were to go over here, you can see we've got a different type of heat exchanger. This type of transformer is called a conservator type transformer. The heat exchanger here is air forced. We'll dub it AF, air forced, and it's oil natural. You can see the air is being forced across by those fans. Oil natural because the oil comes in at the bottom through this connection, well, through all of these pipes, one, 
two, three, four. And then we're going to distribute that oil through the heat exchangers. It's going to go up here and then it goes back into the tank through these connections again. So that's happening naturally. We're not using a pump, so it's oil natural. We're forcing the air, so it's air forced. The reason I stress this is because sometimes you may have oil forced, OF. Sometimes you may have oil natural, ON. Sometimes you may have air force, sometimes you may have air natural, it depends on the design. Where it gets really interesting is if you have transformers that are underground, maybe in a hydroelectric power station, such as a pump storage station, or also sometimes in a mine, you're not going to use the air because you don't have so much air underground to use and you don't want it being heated up. So what you use is a cooling water circuit, and then that also carries its own abbreviations. The abbreviation for the type of cooling that transformer used will be on the nameplate. It's always on the nameplate because it's quite an important bit of information. Over here, if we were to take a cross section, we've got windings, we've got a transformer core. Again, let's just see if we can remove them. There's the core. There are the low and high voltage windings. We've got a tap changer, which we use to regulate the output voltage of the transformer. That's this item. It sits also within the tank. And the tank's full of mineral oil, again, 95% of the time. We've got a temperature monitoring device over here. And if you to look closely, you can see these four red arrows. They're controlling when those fans turn on and off. They're also controlling the alarm set points and things like that. And we'll send that information then to a remote location so that people get an alarm when this transformer is too hot or if we have another issue. You can see we've also got a red needle. This will maybe follow the black needle. So if the black needle comes up and then goes back down, the red needle will stay up. That's a non-reversible indicator. And that tells us what the max temperature was in the past. Alternatively, the red needle indicates only the alarm set point. So different types, sometimes multifunctional. The temperature monitoring for this transformer is installed here. It's going to be similar to a PT100 sensor, it's just a temperature sensor. And we've got our low voltage windings, high voltage windings. We've got our tap changer entrance. You can see it just sits within the tank. And aside from that, I think the other thing that we can take a look at briefly is the Buchholz relay. This is a gas actuated relay. And it's going to tell us if there's a fault within the electrical transformer. For example, a small fault generates a small amount of gas. A large fault generates a large amount of gas. And also it's going to tell us if we have a low level in the transformer. So those gases from electrical faults, they'll come up here. They will accumulate within our Buchholz relay and that will set off an alarm. The other thing that we can do though, as mentioned, is measure the oil level. That's in here. And as the oil level decreases, if it decreases so far that we're going to risk uncovering some of the electrical parts within the transformer, which we don't want because the insulating liquid there is to insulate and cool the transformer, then we're going to get an alarm. So as the insulated liquid drops, if it drops below a certain point, we get an alarm. So that's what the Buchholz relay is doing. It's multifunctional. It has three separate functions. The conservator tank, that's this cylindrical tank on top of the transformer. That's used to cater for the expansion and contraction of the oil when the transformer increases in temperature or decreases. The temperature increases as the load increases and decreases as the load decreases. Here we've got a oil gauge. This is just for measuring the oil level within the transformer conservator tank. And that will also have an alarm as well. You can see that on these red needles. Now, the final bit I want to take a look at is this bit. This is a desk and dryer sometimes called a silica gel breather. It will be full of these tiny beads. These tiny beads are sometimes silica gel, sometimes not. They'll change color depending upon how much moisture they absorb. And the reason we absorb moisture is because as the oil expands, we're going to push air out of this top connection. It's going to be discharged through the dryer, but then we need to draw air back in through this dryer again. And in order to do that, we do that through the base of the dryer here. We draw the air in, it draws moisture in sometimes if there's humidity in the air, and we have these silica gel beads to absorb that moisture and prevent water ingress into our transformer because this would damage the insulating properties of our mineral oil or our insulating liquid, I should say. 
So that was a brief introduction to electrical transformers. You should be able to identify the three different types now, dry type, hermetic and conservator, and also be able to identify all of the parts. Next time you're on a train or driving around in a car, do keep a lookout for these transformers. I guarantee that now you know what they look like, you'll notice them in your surroundings a lot more often. Thank you very much for your time and I'll see you in the next Savory Snacks video.